Welcome to part two of our video on 2D arrays. We're looking at a mock test for grade 12 RT, something that you can use to practice. Look at our video description for the link to part one, but let's go on to the question number four. So just a reminder about this question that we're dealing with a treatment center, and these are the different floors in a building. And the first four floors, they say uh, they have a maximum of four beds in each room, and then the last four have a maximum of one bed in each room. So something to take note of before we get to question four. So question four, complete the code for the BTNQ4 button that displays the story, which is the row that had the most number of beds available in the treatment center. In other words, if we go back to this example here, these rooms all have four beds. So there are three available there and there's three available there. So we take in four minus however many there are in that room to work out what's left over but that's only for those four then we've got the next four which is where we've got one bed so in this case there's no free beds but in this row there's one bed available in that row so something to take note of when we do this question so we need to determine the story which has the highest number of beds available so whenever we are doing individual rows or individual columns something that's very specific to each row or each column i like to just do one of them at a time so we're doing each row row so I'm going to do just the first row and just get that working and then we'll repeat that process eight times so let's try it out let's try over here and I'm going to make an R row and an R col now something to take note of because we are dealing with a row you might think that we're going to use that variable but I'm not I'm going to use that one why because if you look over here the first row has five columns in it so we're not dealing with each row we're just dealing with the five columns of the first row I'm going to use the col for here so I'm going to loop for I col equal one to five now what do I want to do I want to find the available bed so what I can do it's a quick way we could take each one and minus four from them and add that up another way which this might actually work a bit better we know that there's four rooms in each of those blocks there are four beds in each of those blocks I think they said beds so if we think about that that means in those five blocks there are 20 possible beds so if we just add this up and whatever that value is minus 20 will tell us what is left over because there's always 20 beds Beds available because there's four, 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 four. There's 20 beds available, but only four are used there, four are used there, four are used there, and one and one there. So that means in this case there will be six beds left over. So let's do that. That might be a quicker way of doing it. So I'm just going to add up the values in the row and take 20 minus that answer to find out how many beds are available for that particular row. Remember, I'm using the string grid here to to demonstrate, but we're not working with the string grid, working with the array. I'm just using this to visually see that 2D array. So let's sum the values in the array or each row of the array so let's go r sum we're going to make it equal to zero and we're going to loop from one to five and i'm just going to put it again in here just so i can see that this is the end of the r call loop so, so i can keep track of where i am r sum is going to equal to r sum plus the value in array rooms now we are always dealing with the row and the column i'm always dealing with row one in this case and then r call as the next value because i'm only doing the first row just the first row so we're going to go from one to five take that first row and just add all the values in column one to five. That should give me the value in the loop. So let's just for interest, I'm going to make a variable here called leftover beds. Leftover, those are the beds that are left over. I just want to see that we got the right value. And our leftover beds is going to equal to 20 minus whatever R sum is. And then I'm just going to display it just so that I can check that it's working. So these little tricks that you can do just to see that you are on the right track. Just display it, let's see what it's doing. So that just does the first one and there are six beds available in the first row so we're getting it right so we know we got it right now i want to repeat this whole thing eight times for each row because there are eight rows in the 2d array so this whole thing needs to be repeated eight times so this is where my r row loop will go uh, this is our outer loop that's going to go from one until eight all of this content is going to be between that so i'm just going to indent it so we can see that it's this, this associated 
associated with the other loop. This is all in the outer loop. So this is the R row loop or the outer loop. All of that's happening between there. That so we can see where it starts and ends. So there we go. All this is happening inside of the loop. So we're repeating this eight times. And we want to find the row that has the highest amount. So we're doing a max problem. So we summed all the values. We're trying to find which one has the most number of rooms available. So I'm going to make a max variable and we need to record which row is the max. So I'm going to make our max row. So when we do a max problem, I say our max is initialized to a very, very opposite of what it is, a very, very small number. And I'm going to compare this leftover with the max because I want to find what value, what leftover is the biggest leftover. So the moment I work out the leftover, I can get rid of this display now. The moment I work out the leftover, I'm going to just ask, is that leftover, is our leftover bigger than my R max variable and if it is that means we have a new value that is bigger than our R max we have a new champion which means we need to do two things I need to reset max to this R leftover value because that's my new biggest value but I also want to keep track of which row are we at so while we are doing this loop so our max row is equal to whatever our row is because we're going to move on from our row we're going to move on to the next value I need to know when we find this big value and we change our max to this new big value let's also record where we are and that will help me determine which row is the biggest. Okay, does that make sense? And then only once I've done all eight rows, so after this R row outer loop, only over here can I now show in a show message, because I think that's what they want, the show message on question four, which story, which is my max row, and how many beds available. So we can say story, that's the text we want to display, but instead of the four, I'm going to put quote, quote, plus, plus, and then in between the plus, we're going to put the story, which is the max row, it's our, it's not our row, it's our max row. We recorded which one's the biggest. And then instead of the 12, we're going to put quote, quote, and then a plus, plus. And then between the plus, we're going to say our, our max value, because that is the value that has the most number of beds available. And the problem here is the show message is a string. We'll use a string. So we can convert this from int to string. And then I'm actually going to put this on a new line so you can see it more clearly. And then this will be int to string as well. Our max has the value of whichever left over is the highest. And when we record that, we also record which row we are at when we did that so that we can display it at the end if we just spelled that correctly. But before we actually before we actually try it, just remember whenever we do nested loops, we do the inner loop first and then we put the outer loop around it. But we need to adjust things. Look here, we are all we are only working out the first row every single time. I must change that to row one, then row two, which is my R row variable. So that's going to be R row. So that we are continuously adding up the values, the sum in all the values for the row. Remember, our sum must be inside of this loop because when we start row two, we want to reset our sum to a zero that we can recalculate the total number of rooms in just row two. We don't want this to still have the value from row one. So that's why we reset it to zero. Let's try that quickly. Story with the most bits. Story seven has 17 beds available. Now that's incorrect because in story seven, there aren't actually 20 beds. There's only one bed in each room. So we just remember that. So how do we adapt this to cater for those four floors? Well, if the value, this is the leftover. So if my row value is less than equal to four, then we are dealing with the four values, the four rows, the four stories that have four beds in. They will all have 20 beds in total then this works our leftover is going to equal to the 20 minus our sum but if it's not less than four that means our row is greater than four which means it's these rooms five six seven eight it's those ones and those only have one bed in each of those rooms which means it has a maximum of one two three four five beds in total so therefore in this case our r left over is going to equal to five minus our sum because it'll be a different maximum capacity in that case so once we worked out the sum of all of the beds that are used in a row we take 20 minus that sum if it's the first four but if it's not the first four then it's obviously after the first four which means five to eight then we just take five minus the sum and that should give us a more accurate value so let's display ah story four has 12 beds available so for there's one and two three and four five and six and then another three and another three so there are 12 beds available in story four and that is correct you see those ones can only take one so only this one has one bed available and that has two so that is definitely the one with the most number of beds available so there we go that is question four
For the data files and links to the other videos for this mock test, go to the video description. You'll see all the details there. Click on that like button and subscribe. We'd love to hear from you, so leave a comment. And follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.